What's up, what's up everybody? It's time for another Command & Conquer Rivals video sponsored by EA. Now, if you're new to the game, Command & Conquer Rivals is a real-time strategy game developed by EA's Redwood Studios where you can battle in quick player versus player real-time strategy battles with full control over commanding your troops throughout the course of the entire match. CNC Rivals is available worldwide no matter where you live and you can click the link in the description to try it out for yourself. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like, sponsored Video Bagel, of course you're enjoying the game because it's sponsored. I actually have been enjoying the game, I actually have been playing the game. I really appreciate a few things about this game. Number one is you can pop into the game, you can pop into a match within several seconds. There is no farming. I have spent the past several years of my life farming this, farming that, farming this, farming that, farming that from the time that I wake up and time that I go to sleep in other games. And I really appreciate the fact that I can get into gameplay within seconds of entering this game. Cannot stress that enough. Number two is that there is no RNG. There's no crits. There's no accuracy resistance. And maybe the skill lands and maybe the skill knots. There's no violet runes. There's all of these things that stress me out about like I should have won that, etc, etc. If I lose matches here... It's not based on RG, it's based on the enemy outskilled me. So there is also, there is, let's be real, there is a factor of, like, if you level things up a little bit more than your opponent, of course, you have a slight advantage, but you can make up for, like, one or two levels based on outplaying them and outskilling them and picking the counterparts. So let's talk strategy. There are a lot of different units in the game, and everything serves a purpose. It's not like, oh, this one unit is better than everything else in the game. There's everything has a counter. You pick this, your enemy picks that. It could be a counter to you. Or you can pick the counter to what your enemy is picking. For example, let's say I have this one, the Rifleman. Okay, it's a ver uh, fairly, it's a common card, so it's fairly easy to, well, it's not fairly, everyone has it, right? Everyone has it, everyone's gonna get upgrades to it. Um, it's actually not a bad card. You can send them out. I know a lot of people that send out the Rifleman early game to scout out to see what their opponent is doing and see what kind of bases. Like, for example, if the opponent is using a, building a War Factory or a Helipad or a Tech Lab, then you can say, okay, well, if they're building a Tech Lab, they're going to have a lot of armored troops. So maybe I want to build things that are going to be strong against armored troops since I know that that's what they're going to be picking in the future. Uh, but these, these Rifleman... Uh, and also these missile squads uh, a nice counter pick if your opponent picks those early game you can pick these shockwave troopers I love these shockwave troopers you can pick these shockwave troopers because they're really good against the ground troops alternatively if your opponent is picking like okay he's gonna build a rhino he's gonna build maybe a pit bull I like to pick an orca because orcas are gonna be strong against ground targets um, Another thing is, especially against the ground troops, you see a lot of wolverines, so... It's kind of one of the things that I've learned that people started to counter me with, because I love to use these shockwave troopers. Eventually, they just start bringing out these wolverines, and they will start to gain an advantage over me if I have so many shockwave troopers out. Kind of counterpicks my stuff, and... GG. One of the nice things is, let's say, uh, a, a, a nice counter to the wolverines, even, even further is the Titan. So the Titan is really nice against the Wolverine. However, you can even counter a Titan, going back to the beginning, with a Missile Squad. It's just that level of counterplay where it's, it's kind of cyclical, like everything has a counter in one way or another. It's just about like, making sure your deck has enough answers to the different combinations and the different units that your opponent can be using. And the more options that you have especially i mean upgrading does definitely help though as well because it gives you just a, a small stat advantage over uh over your enemies if you have the same troops and you both have the same skill level and you have just a little bit of stat advantage that little stat advantage is going to help but um if you can effectively counter pick your enemies and see what they're picking and know as much in advance as possible what their strategy is you can counterplay them by picking the uh the stronger unit so here's a list of 10 key points to remember when playing command and conquer rivals number one find the deck that suits your play style just because someone else recommends a deck to you that's maybe late game that's got a lot of mechs and armored vehicles and stuff like that and then you're like hey i don't know if i like this find try a bunch of def uh a bunch of def a bunch of different decks out 
see which one you like playing the most because there's different play styles and you may just like not like this one but you may really like this other one and there's not even just one way to win sure you can take the platforms and you can fire the missiles but you could also go directly towards your enemy's base you could also deal direct damage directly towards their base which a lot of people possibly don't know don't even think about because they're too focused on the missile you could also uh do damage to their enemy harvesters destroy their harvesters and you can get ty every time you destroy a harvester you get 100 tiberium from that so there's a lot of different play styles play the way that you feel you enjoy the most number two do your dailies uh let me show you guys the dailies these are the dailies the, the daily bounties so uh, you can even re-roll them, like for example, if I don't want to do this, I can re-roll that. Do your dailies. Great way to, uh, great way to get free loot. Uh, number three, play matches to get your free crates and resources. Um, especially the ones like, for example, uh, over here at the bottom, the crate delivered. I like to always have uh, 10 energy there. This way, I like to stock up, stockpile the energy early. And then, for example, if I'm doing other stuff, I'll say like, oh, crate delivered. Cool, I'll open the crate and then I'll start another uh, delivery. So, uh, do that. Get lots of, get lots of crates that way. Um, check your daily cards and the free crates as well. Here's another thing. Uh, let me go over here. Uh, daily cards is this tab here. I did happen to purchase quite a lot today. Uh, this is not, uh, this is just for uh, the in-game coins though. That, uh, that you can purchase all these. For example... I just wanted to get these. I don't know why I felt like getting these, but also this free crate. I sometimes miss these. Like, I sometimes forget that there is still a free crate that you can get um, whenever the time. So it's eight hours until another free crate. But yeah, uh, make sure you get those every day. Uh, number five, everything has a counter. Like we mentioned before, you can counter one unit with another unit, and it's kind of cyclical. So even the strong units could be even countered by weaker, by, by more common units. So the more rare things could even be common, uh, countered by more common things so just understand the counters make sure you at least have some counters for the different options that your enemy has in their deck make sure you have some uh, counters in your deck number six don't upgrade everything use your resources on only the stuff you're actively using like for example uh here's a nice one i don't really use these riflemen i know a lot of people use the riflemen i don't use uh this like yeah sure i have enough gold to upgrade this i have enough uh cards to upgrade this but I don't really use it too much, so I don't, uh, so I'm not upgrading it because the resources are limited. And even though they seem like there's tons and tons of resources now, you could get to a point in the future where you're like, man, I need some more of this, I need some more of that. So if you're not actively playing with this stuff, don't just upgrade everything. Um, number seven, try to assess the enemy strategy as soon as possible. I know we already covered this, but if you feel like they're going for more of a rush strategy, then bring out your things in your deck that you have already planned to counter that strategy or if a late game strategy then maybe think okay maybe i need to build certain units to counter that so try to assess the enemy strategy and find out what counters you need to be building uh sooner rather than after it's too late number eight make sure your deck has options to counter various enemy decks i feel like we already covered kind of that as well uh number nine not all maps play the same which we'll talk about in a second but different maps have different choke points and things do play a little bit differently depending on what map is something it looks like deceptively like there's the same play style for all the maps but they do get a little bit different and number 10 watch in-game replays to learn more there's stronger play much stronger players than me in my guild um so i like to watch some of their play styles and I like to be okay so this is what they brought against that that's what they brought against that and that's one way to always make always be improving your gameplay is find players that are really really good that are better than you uh, or even the best, and see what they're doing right. See if maybe they're playing the same deck that you have, but they're playing it a little bit differently and more efficiently. All right, guys, let's take a look at the deck that I've been using down here at the bottom, and let's see why I've kind of gravitated towards these units. Now, this is not specifically a rush deck, and this is not specifically a late game deck. This is kind of a mix between a lot of them. There's a lot of different answers. I have two from, for example, I have four different buildings. Two from the barracks. I don't even need to include, like, if I wanted to not have that, I could just bring in something else from the tech lab, like this. No, I can add it there. But, uh, I generally like to- I generally like to have a mix of all these- No, I want to add that there. I generally have to like to have a mix of all these things. This way I have answers for every situation that I could be in. Of course I could adjust the deck and play more and see if maybe I don't need this unit and I could bring in this other unit instead. But I figure this is like, this is kind of a 
answers to everything, not specifically strong in any one situation, not specifically weak in any one situation. It's kind of a flexible kind of deck. Um, so I have, for example, like I like to bring out these Shockwave Troopers first. I know some people like to bring out the Riflemen first, but I like to bring out the Shockwave Troopers first because if they bring out the Missile Squad or if they bring out their own Shockwave Troopers, I'm either at an advantage over their Missile Squad or I am equal to their Shockwave Troopers or an advantage over their Riflemen. Whereas if I bring out the Riflemen first, I would be at a disadvantage if they bring out the their own Shockwave Troopers or if they bring out a Rhino, right? Of course, the Shockwave Troopers are... Um, are at a disadvantage to the Rhino, but that really depends on what they bring out first as well. But I like to bring out the Shockwave Troopers. Just in general, I like to use those the most, and I've been... Maybe it's just their visor. It could just be their visor that I like to use the most, and I'm like, yeah, they got a cool visor, and they got a cool weapon. They do have a cool weapon, though. But anyway, I've been kind of gravitating towards that the most. I see a lot of people effectively bringing out these Rhinos first, so I'm going to try to alter my gameplay to bring out the Rhinos first. This way I have more of an advantage over the other ground troops, at least. I think that's probably even a better strategy than bringing out Shockwave Troopers first, though, to be honest. Um, but I have those to deal with that. And then I have the Rhinos to deal with, of course, the ground troops, while also uh, being decent against the air troops, uh, as well as we can see in the, um, in the info here. Uh, and then I have this, just in case I need to, uh, to hit some of these, uh, these ground troops, the, the vehicles. The, one of the one of the um, one of the issues that this that my current strategy has is if I bring out too many shockwave troopers. I think I mentioned this uh, already previously in the video, but the enemy likes to bring out these wolverines to counter me because they just have a massive advantage over the shockwave troopers, over the ground troops in general. And then I, it, when they bring out the wolverines, I have to bring out these titans. But the titan is kind of an expensive purchase it's 150 tiberium to even do it and then you can just counter the those with the uh with the missile squad anyway but it's it's just kind of playing by ear and seeing seeing what they're playing and trying to get favorable trades and trying to maneuver your units to be in a better position than the enemies are in but it's it's kind of like the, the deck that i've been using is kind of a a mix of a little bit of everything, not specifically strong in one place, but not specifically weak in one place either. And I'd like to also start out with uh, one Harvester. I know some people like to do two Harvesters and go late game, but I feel like two Harvesters, you're too much of a disadvantage early game with the two Harvesters. And I've seen some people even do no Harvesters early game and go for just a push. And also, this Dr. Liang, I did try Dr. Liang out, but I feel like the Dr. Liang is probably a better option for the late game uh, tech lab heavy decks where they're like I want to bring up big units big units big units big units and then the Dr. Liang is uh, he's got his um, his healing his repair drone which is probably a better option for those well I just feel like the strong arm um, you can see the info here the minigun turret is just it's a little bit f more flexible like you could you could just put that in a little bit more situations than uh, Dr. Liang but that's the deck that I've been using, and I've been enjoying it so far. I'm going to work on a Nod deck now, though, because I unlocked the Nod. Have not really played with them. I wanted to wait to do it on video, but I have not really played with them too. Uh, not at all yet. Again, because I've been waiting to do it on video. I've been holding off. Been very patient. So we'll get to see that. Uh, we'll get to see that as well. Next, I want to talk about some maps. So in here, we have we see Silver League, Bronze League. By the way, the unit level cap is different for each one of the leagues. So for example, if you have highly upgraded units, I don't have highly upgraded, I have like, I have some sevens though. So for example, if I was in the Iron League and I had some of these, like my Titan is at seven, my Shockwave Troopers are at seven, in the Iron League, my units would be level capped to six. So even though they're seven, when I go into the battles, they would be capped at six just to make it more fair. But also if we click on this uh, eye in the top uh, right hand corner, we see Iron League map, Slot Canyon, Cauldron, Caged In, we also see it's different for every single one. So we only have, we only fight on certain maps in each league. So here we have Silver League, for example, and I'll explain what, uh, I'll explain what all these different things are, what all these different colors are. So the dark gray, uh, we see Fertile Basin, Open Prairie, Three Sentinels, Needle, and Battlefield. Everything is, it looks very similar, but they actually play a little bit differently. You have to think about different choke points for your units. Uh, 
and this, they do play a little bit differently as well. So you could even have a really good win rate. You could have maybe like a 60-70% win rate on maybe Open Prairie, but when you get to Battlefield, you're like, I have a 30-40% to 40 win rate. I don't know why that is, because the maps do play a little bit differently. You have to think about um, your unit placement a little bit differently in each map. So the, uh, the Dark Grey... It's just open land. You can go, you can place your troops there. Uh, you can walk around, whatever. The blue and the red, the light blue and the, the light red, are your base and your enemy base. Uh, also keep in mind that the win condition is to destroy the base directly without even the missile. Uh, the orange, so you can, you can even do that. So think about, like, the openness of the base to where you can maneuver troops. If you can possibly maneuver them directly, to get a direct kill on the base instead of trying to contest the platforms. Um, so those are the bases. The, the the black spot in the middle, of course, is where the missile is. The orange ones, the orange pads are the the orange uh, colors are the launch pads uh, that you use to that you contest and you uh, you use to launch the missile. Uh, the light gray is the rocks, so you can't move around there. So those are those are kind of they create natural choke points. And then the green ones are the Tiberium Fields, which your Harvester will go to these Tiberium Fields to collect Tiberium um, to give you resources. So you have to think about which Tiberium Fields are close to the launch pads. If your enemy is going to be occupying some of these launch pads, potentially they could be really close to where your Harvester is harvesting your Tiberium and could destroy your Harvester for one. And then when they destroy your harvester, they get a hundred Tiberium as well. So think about maybe protecting your harvester more when it's close to a launch pad that the enemy might be occupying or might be trying to occupy. Also, if the if the uh, the Tiberium fields are more, or th if there's less obstacles in the way of the Tiberium fields from your opponent's base. So there's a lot of different things because because they do play differently. So you might even want a strategy for hitting the base directly, or trying to go for attacking the Harvester sooner rather than not worrying about it, depending on how the map layout is. Also, in some of these matches, natural choke points do occur. So, for example, let's say we're doing the three Sentinels map, right? So there's the, let's say you're the red base. Uh, there's the three launch pads, which are the orange ones, the light gray being the rocks. There's like this little valley in between, which creates choke points. So let's say, for example, you have a very... Uh, a very solid top base and you have the right uh, the right bottom right base as well but the bottom right base only has like one unit there and the enemy comes for your bottom base uh, your bottom right base you could even flank them with some units from your top base you could cut around uh, and flank them from in between bases using those choke points and they can't even you could put yourself in a favorable situation where they have nowhere to run and you just surround them by all areas so you got to keep in mind these different choke points on each map as well as the Tiberium field locations that they could potentially just destroy your harvester like for example again in three sentinels where all the Tiberium fields are next to each other and if the enemy is trying to secure for example that top base they can just go right for your harvester pretty easily without without too much effort and get your harvester get an extra Tiberium pretty simply so you might want to make sure that your harvester is at least uh, protected when you're when you're on maybe that map more so than open prairie where there's that space in between and the the pad on the bottom on their side is not even close to the Iberian fields where your harvester is more protected without even needing troops there to make sure it doesn't get destroyed so there's a lot of different things to think about in all of these different maps they do play a little bit differently all right, so let's hop into a map and a, a map, a match, and let's see how we do. Okay, so they have uh, Doctor Liang, is their commander. So they're not going to have any turrets, but they are going to be healing some of their units. So let's go for this harvester first, and let's go for uh, one of these. This way we get some rhinos out. I don't usually bring the rhinos out first. I usually bring the shockwave troopers, but I feel like let's change it up a little bit. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's try uh, going down here. So this harvester is going to be potentially going down there by the uh, by the bottom base, so we can bring out another one of these. But they have a oh, that's perfectly fine. You know, we can see if we can get a nice trade there against that. 
And we can just go there. We can bring out another one. Okay. So we can even bring in... Actually, we're not going Let's go this. Let's get a two-on-one situation. Let's get a, a second harvester. Second harvester is kind of, uh, kind of sketchy, though. So, yeah, we're going to be harvesting more for the long run, but we're not going to be, uh... We're kind of sacrificing a little bit early game. We can even bring this back out of harm's way. Kind of bring this over here. We can do the tech lab and we can get another, potentially, one of these. So let's see if we can get this guy going right now and then bring him in. Okay, so we got our so we got our Titan. They have an advantage. They're going to fire off that first missile first, but we at least have a He's going right for the harvester. He's not even messing around. But we at least have uh we have this Titan out on the battlefield now. And we can bring um one of these Wolverines now too. So we can even just uh destroy this, destroy this unit. So we're trying to go for uh favorable trades right now. We can bring in uh, you there. We don't need to worry too much about. Um... Oh, see, I don't even have those in my deck. Kind of would like to get those in my deck. I can bring one of those in here. So this way, no matter what they do, I kind of have one on each, uh, one on each platform. So we don't really. We could just bring in very expensive units because we have this double harvester now. We could bring in uh, very expensive units now. I am gonna stick in another. Um, Another minigun, though. Unit I'm going to bring out another one. I'm just going to bring out as much expensive stuff as, as possible. I'm going to go over here, put myself in a favorable situation, and I'm going to go right for this tank here. Okay, so we lost we lost the first launch, but now we have an advantage here because we're bringing out all this, all this uh, heavy machinery. And I'm going to go over here. Put myself in a favorable, fa favorable situation here. I'm gonna go uh, actually try to target these ones on the top because they're more of the threat right now. Actually, I can stick out this uh, this other one. We can even bring out the uh, some air troops as well. So let's see. Let's see if we can continue this uh, this trying to keep this. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. No. Lost. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. We have so much though that we can do. Let's try for this uh, orca. Let's bring this guy out. No, he he backed off too fast. He backed off too fast, man. Let's bring out another big troop. Bring out a uh, orca too. Uh, so we got the titan, we got the orca, because I didn't want to go all all out with uh, with one. So he's got his healing unit, but it's it's gonna it should be fine. It should be fine. Even if he's healing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I tried to just see what he was picking and tried to get a favorable advantage over the unit that we were we were picking. Hope I hope I didn't make. Hope I made at least some sense. But we could have even gone for the base directly. I really don't usually go for the base directly. Uh, that's not the strategy that I like to use, but it is a strategy. So let's take a look at some of the rewards that we got from here. We got a crate delivered. Credits. Diamonds. Ooh, and a Banshee. Ooh, that's gonna be fun to play with. And a Missile Squad. Okay, so we could have already... We could have already upgraded the missile squad before we even started, didn't we? So let's order another crate. Convoy and I actually requested. like to order a crate, and then I like to speed it up by four hours. I don't I do not do the rush with the diamonds. Uh, even though we can, I mean, we can, but I just like to do the little speed up and then come out, uh, come again in three hours and do that. Let's see what kind of rewards we got from level 10. They're not rewards. We got credits. And we have a tick tank, which I have not even tried yet. I'm so excited to try this Nod stuff, man. I'm so excited to try a new, and I'm gonna do like just a totally different deck for Nod. I'm gonna just try to do like just a rush, rush really aggressive thing uh, with them. But anyway, guys, uh, again, this is Command and Conquer Rivals. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, 
you can check out the uh, the game in the link in the description again thank you very much for EA and Redwood Studios for sponsoring the video much appreciated uh, hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys at least try it out for yourselves because there's only a certain amount like it's like okay hey it's a video game it's you're seeing video game gameplay on the screen but it's a different story when you're actually in and you're playing it you're like yo this game is more fun than I thought it was gonna be okay okay I see how it is and that's generally the that's generally what I hear from people is like this game is more fun than I thought it was gonna be so anyway guys, hope you enjoyed it. I will see you as always in the next one.